Hello and welcome to Tuesday's conversation with the Earth that Marianne and I are doing. And we strategized a little bit before going live and decided let's talk about having truly a conversation with the Earth in light of the fact that hurricane season is here in the US, in light of the fact of all the wildfires that are in the western part of the US, in light of the fact that in Europe, fire season is potentially starting and it has been not that great in the past few years. So conversation with the earth, where could that leave you? And what if instead of looking at the earth, as I know I did, years ago, oh, the earth is so big, what can I do as a puny little person? But the reality is, is, is that the earth is actually willing to support us, to have our back. And can she do it if we are not talking? So what if we start talking? You're grinning, Marianne. What's your thought? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Karina. And uh, oh, I'm so glad we are here again. So, yeah, it's a big one. Starting to talk with Earth, really, really talking. And, yeah, talking in silence. I would name it for me, for myself. Mm -hmm. And speaking about the fires, yes in Europe, and I'm living in Portugal, we had for several years, last year's really big, big forest gone in flames, gone up in flames. And I experienced something really that opened even more my consciousness about it, but also yeah, the beauty of what is possible because you mentioned we as little persons who are we mm -hmm. when you see the earth the earth planet earth really i still not get what is really the dimension of the earth it's like i can't really imagine so yeah i little thing what can i do be for that earth and it was mm, three years ago now it will be three years ago it was a time that there was really a big big fire going on a big area and at that time right before the um, the fire started i had a friend i have a friend who bought a house and it was it is there in that area but she wasn't here at that time so the house was there all by itself and i asked what can i do i wasn't because a distance from where, where i lived at that time to her place was also a big distance and whatever what is possible? I was really in that question at that time. And I asked, really, what can I be, do? And I sat me for a while. And I breathed. Reading with the earth. And I was asking. And I took contact also with her house and the ground around it. The acres around that was her domain. And I was with that and i could feel really streaming energy through all my body through my hands and i received the message clearly like it's okay it will be fine i'm here i'm here and i thought what the heck is that i'm here later when she came back to her house and she rang me in tears of gratitude and she told me and still i'm i'm getting goosebumps because she called me and she said nothing nothing was 
touched by the flames. Everything around me went up in flames or was really damaged. But nothing was touched. The house, the acres, everything that belongs to her belongs in a matter of speaking because it's still belonging to the earth that you know what she was paying for. And I go, wow, wow, really? Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It is. And that opened for me even more going into the conversation with the earth, with nature mm -hmm. also in general. Yeah. A friend told me that years ago during a hurricane, um, a friend was affect, uh, would have been affected possibly and asked for a contribution. And so um, several people contributed to her and asked for her part of the house for, not even specifically for her part of the house, but for her to be safe and not to have any loss. And what she heard back then was that the house was damaged by the hurricane, but not the part where her friend lived in. And even though a wall was missing, and hurricanes usually have pretty intense rains with it, nothing was wet of her stuff. And I, with this recent fire in California, I did some energy work on a friend's house. And as a sudden it shot through my mind is, oh, there are eucalyptus trees in the backyard. and. You know, everybody knows how eucalyptus trees go yeah. up in flame yeah. easily. And that thought shot through my head and I got the message back. Uh, we don't have to burn. So can I ask then, would you please not burn and contribute to keeping the house safe? And that's beyond me. It's actually... What I'm seeing is, is, is if we are willing to ask, nature, the earth, is willing to contribute to make that ask come true. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh, it's people uh, in access consciousness have contributed to the earth in regards to the fires in California. And it rained and this morning I read that the firefighters were able to breathe a sigh of relief because it had rained and the weather was cooperating with their efforts to stop the fire. Yeah. And uh, so what is possible really to, to do? What if we can, uh, can do so much? And I remember talking years and years ago with my father about, you know, why doesn't the farmer just talk and ask for the rain or for whatever? Yeah, but that would not work because they don't know what is necessary. And today I'm looking at that question and say, hmm, what if instead of me deciding this is what necessary, what if I ask the earth to contribute, for instance, to my crop coming to fruition? The earth knows what's needed and giving it over to the earth instead of me trying to be in control or the person trying to be in control. But that we ask the earth again. Yeah. It's again you, going you know back. Yeah, and do you know, Karina? Speaking about that, like Portugal, mm -hmm. it when the um, we became the United Euro Europe, I will say yeah. it like this. Then there was a lot more influences of the other lands around them, as you mm -hmm. know. Yeah, and now, and that was also when they started to put the gimmicks on the trees, on mm -hmm. the plants, on, for getting more fruit or harvest in general. Mm -hmm. 
because they hear it from the others. Now, since a few years, like they started, yeah, when when did it open? 2002, I believe it went open, uh, a communion. So what is this, 20 years ago? Not even that. So for nearly five, six years max, they started to notice that the harvest was shrinking every year. Yeah. Shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. And when I dared to say, yes, but you know, years and years and years, the people here lived really in communion with the earth. Mm -hmm. And they went with every sign. They could read the signs of nature and they went with it. And in winter they went in rest and then in, in the spring they, they would do what was required and go on, go on, go on. Now they go a whole year long because it's needed. They do it everywhere. And we put more and more and more and more of those chemics and the grow the, the harvest shrinks and the sadness about not having a harvest as they want to is growing but they can't see the, the the link between those two they can't see it and as we see now in which way the nature earth generates itself mm -hmm. what how would it be if they stopped doing it i'm yeah, there is a knowing that in a few years, the harvest is back again, like giving what is there to give and in abundance. Uh, and I, I agree with you, uh, not because of necessarily personal knowledge, but I have started when COVID started, I came across a podcast by Dr. Zach Bush, yeah. And I started following him after that. And what he's, uh, he is working with farmers in the Midwest of the US to stop using glyphosate and all the fertilizers because he said the harvest has decreased by about 40% compared yeah. to before, yeah. which is a tremendous amount. It is. And he said it would probably take two years for them to go uh, back up towards where they used to be if they stop fertilizing, first of all, using GMO and introduced other old practices. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's and, the old uh, but that is really, really old practices, not even practices that were in place before all the fertilization, because even that was destroying the soil. But he said, we need all that stuff that is in the soil that keeps the soil fertile and loose so we can have a good harvest versus what the glyphosate and all the other does is it hardens the soil, it compacts the soil, and it makes it, now saying this, I become aware of, it probably makes it a lot more difficult for any yeah. of the seeds to break through that hard soil, and that's part of why you have the decline. Yeah. But again, if, what if we started to talk with the earth and ask the earth, earth, what do you require from me? Yeah. Because the earth is absolutely intent on abundance. And if we look at the earth, how much abundance is there? How yeah. quickly is an empty parking lot peppered with grass? The worst dirt road that I ever drove was an abundant, abandoned highway that had been paved over and you could see how nature was eating in from the sides and it was also all broken up and that's why i call it dirt <laughs> but with big chunks of pavement 
it was a really rough dirt road. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, nature is abundant. Nature is yeah. supporting life. Yeah, and, and even speaking about the weeds and the ab abundant way nature mm -hmm. shows her, what the heck, so many people decided what is beautiful, what is nurturing, what yeah. doesn't can be there. So they put everything. And you know, Karina, it's since a few years I discovered this with the, um, the fruit trees, the apple trees, mm -hmm. for instance. They started here to put um, like a type of sugar. It's not really sugar because it's it's some yeah physical no it's not physical um artificial. how do you call it artificial sugar but they put it into the ground like fertilizations to open up the sweetness of mm. the apple yeah but and i discovered it by <laughs> And it was so weird, Chris. Uh, it was so weird, Karina. It was a lemon. I had a lemon, a bio lemon mm -hmm. from a garden, from some someone who gave it me. And when I wanted to drink in my morning tea, in, in not tea, I made uh, hot water with uh, squeezed oh. lemon. Yeah. And I don't put anything in it because I, I like the, the taste of the, the sour of the lemon and I started to drink and I thought what's this it was like sugar water a lemon a lemon without it was like sugar and when my partner came home and I asked did you know how is this possible that the lemon can taste as sweet as it tastes I never had this taste mm -hmm. of a lemon and he said yeah but i know where it came from they use those artificial sugar for getting more sweet apples to sell and then i thought i want i want to know what it is an apple artificial sweetened apple it doesn't taste as nothing like it tastes sweet but it doesn't taste like an apple because it's not sugar it's artificial sugar yeah and it's it's not and it's not really yeah required right. so later on two years ago it was i went to a place where they're really uh actors of uh apple trees and i started also to communicate there and the, the sadness of the trees, of the abuse they received, forced abuse uh, mm -hmm. through all those artificial, if it is a fertilizer, if it is chemics, if it, it's, it's nothing natural. Mm -hmm. And it hurt it so much in my heart. And I thought, yeah. wow, even that, even that. And still, still, those trees chose to go on, mm -hmm. to give fruit yeah. to those who are abusing them. And it's, it's really, how many conclusions do we have? what we have to do to nature in order to fill in the blank. And is that truly necessary? Yeah. And yeah, we are told you have to do this because there are the specialists that uh, the master gardeners, the uh, nursery people, uh, you know, whoever they are, that tell us this is what is needed, but it's only passing on conclusions that somebody has come to. Yeah. And if that... Yeah, yeah, go on. 
No, go, go on. It, it can be that it is something that is required at the time, but it's completely different when you go in communication and yeah. ask, is this now required? And that brings me also to that point where I was really obsessive, nearly obsessive with food and healthy food. And I studied how it, it works in the body, how the body reacts and this and this you can combinate and that's healthy. And at the point that it costs energy, that costs energy. And when I got that, I thought something is off here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Something is off here. And then hearing more and more because i could hear it perhaps uh in access also it's the point of view there is no wrong there is no right there is no good there is no bad what if we can see that also in the food what if we can ask hey body or go with what the body is leading us to and and one of those things is like a Coke. I couldn't drink a Coke and I had the point of view that a Coke is really, really a bad and unhealthy thing to do. And then it was in the start of access. And then I hear then, yeah, but a Coke can be really, really nurturing for your body. And I thought, yeah, but not my body because it's too bad for my body. I don't want to drink Coke, et cetera, et cetera. And <laughs> a certain day it started a headache, really a headache and headache type that I never had before. But not, think of, not thinking about the Coke nor thinking about asking a question. And it was the, the second day in the evening that I started open me up for, hmm, could it be that my body wants to have a Coke? But I didn't got with it because I didn't have it in the house. And at that time, the, the shops were closed. So in the morning, the next day, I went out to get a Coke. And I only bought one of those, um, yes. how do you, yeah, yes, yeah. those 23, centiliters in my case and uh and i said that. and even then it took me still a few hours before i really went to open up the can and started to drink and i thought really karina it was like that and i served myself like two two fingers in the glass and i drank it and it was the most delicious drink I had. I went so for the half of the cake because it was enough. And within yeah. five, ten minutes max, my headache that I had for nearly three days went. Was gone, yeah. Was gone. And still, it's not that I'm drinking a lot of Coke. It, it isn't. But now I don't make it any longer wrong. And yeah. when I sense that, that pull to have a Coke, I go with it. So now I, I see that I have it in the house. And really it's, it's so, yeah, even I think twice in a month, my body requires it. It's not much. Yeah, after I heard through access that Coke is quote unquote good for you, uh, I started drinking Coke, really started drinking Coke, not a ton <laughs> one, because I, I don't like uh, necessarily carbonated drinks that much. Yeah. But yeah. I started drinking it. And nowadays it is back to I open a can, I drink maybe half a can. And then I'm done. Yeah. I'm not interested. I'm not even looking for it. I'm not touching it. Yeah. And uh, I'm not even saying, oh, you opened the can, you need to finish it because otherwise it's a waste. You know, all those stories that we tell ourselves. Yeah. All the yeah. reasons and justifications that we have. 
Yeah. And it's fine, you know. Yeah. And as you see, this theme of we have to go on with it because I opened it or I put it on my plate, this food, etc., etc. Isn't that what we are doing also with the earth? We did it for so long, like in this way. So it has to go with this way. And now this one is saying you have to do it like that and that and that. And he will know because he, he signed it or whatever mm -hmm. it is. But where are the questions? Where yeah. are the questions? Where is, where is that, that we actually check in and ask the question? Yeah. And isn't that actually the real purpose for a question <laughs> to become aware not to get an answer or validate a guru and i mean guru even uh, a person who is known in in his or her field yeah what if we ask actually a question and what if that is the beauty of the diversity because you and I are not the same. So the space from which you would ask a question is probably slightly different than the space from which I am asking a question. And now multiply that with thousands of people. And yes. each answer, quote unquote, the awareness that we get will be slightly different. But isn't there the beauty in the richness, yeah. in the diversity. Yeah, and isn't that also the contribution? Mm -hmm. as your contribution is different than mine's and different yeah. than my and brother or sister. And, and that's also diversity as heard requests. Mm -hmm. This diversity, but from a completely other vision and space and yeah. that's the beauty and i know i shuttered it so many years i shuttered it down to go in those questions i wasn't aware that i was questioning before because i wasn't learned it and by speaking about it even with the weather i know i have some potency there Literally, I, I can ask the weather and hmm, in general, when, because I'm asking also with no point of view, with no expectations. It's not a command I, I make. It, it's more like, hmm, what would it take and, and how would it be and more in, in that. And I receive. I receive, but when I say that or said that, it's what like, yeah, you can think, you may think you, you imagine. were, you imagine. And when I say, yeah, but you looked at what they would say for the week I was going to Belgium, for example, because there it's raining a lot. Last year's a lot less, but in the past it was. And so often, as I would, as friends would say, oh, but it will be a good word because she's coming. <laughs> so far, and then I said, yeah, but how do you call that? You start to say it will be good weather when she comes. And often it was because when there was rain, um, the previous yeah. was uh, the rain, but I asked, oh, I would like that, a good sun. It, not the heat or something, but a dry weather so I can go there and there. I, I would like to visit that and that and that. And I had, I had the weather I asked for. And then I said, often, and now I take the sun with me. So bye-bye, you can have the rain now. Oh, you don't have to do that. Oh, yes, I can. <laughs> but, but you were, you, when you were talking, uh, I went back to a memory. Years ago, when I was living in New Mexico, we had a, a really bad flash flood that took out culverts and stuff. And so a few days later, there was this black cloud in the West. And I just said, could we, 
rain fine, but could we please not do flash flood? The amount of rain that is created yeah. in flash flood. And the cloud dissipated. And I shared that with the spiritual group I was in when we met next. And there were actually two people who told me, I wouldn't want to be that powerful. How much fear do we have of having potency? <laughs> do you know why I'm laughing? Yeah. I wasn't acknowledging that it was a power, like it's more, it's normal to do that. So, for you, oh, wow. <laughs> and I wasn't too, so it was new for me, but I believe people that said you could do this, and so that's why I even did it. But where do we go with that? Where do people go with that? And is that the reason why people don't even want to talk to the earth and make a request? Wow. Yeah. Because they feel then, they, or they look at it, it is my request that made that happen. Yeah. Instead of, I am requesting from the earth and the earth makes it happen, which is a totally yeah. different viewpoint. It is totally different. And it can, when you don't have a point of view, if it will be, or like not going in the command, not commanding the earth, give me this, whether do this, do that. It's not from that space. No, it isn't. A request is, is basically yeah. a plea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> plea, yeah. could you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> could you, would you? Please, yeah. pretty please. Really? Which is a totally different space. It is. It is. And what is still uncovered or not discovered by ourselves, perhaps not discovered as possibilities in which we, we can be, we can contribute, we can mm -hmm. commune with the earth. And that is something really that's now in the last months mm -hmm. more present in my personal life as, yeah, I'm intrigued, I'm really, intrigued and, and curious like a little child mm -hmm. what is possible what is possible and what if that is if you really want to go far so to speak what if you do co-creation mm -hmm. and what would happen if we actually included the earth in what we would like to create and have it as a co-creation instead of I am the one who is creating. Yeah. Yeah. That coming out of that. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. So we can continue that conversation next time. Co-creating yes, with the earth. <laughs> co-creating with the earth. And I can say, yes, I have little nibbits of yep. experience in the last week so let's uh let's put it on <laughs> yeah. yeah great idea karina great okay. idea okay and <sighs> i'll see you next week i look forward we... to the conversation yes <laughs> till next week bye bye take care <laughs>